welcome you all in this course on <laughs> mechanical measurement systems. Uh, today we will continue our discussions with <laughs> transducers and today we will discuss the selection of transducers and the type of transducers. So, to begin with <laughs> the selection of uh, transducers, so we have to look, of, look for many aspects of the transducers before selecting a particular transducer. First of all, we should know, first of all, first and the foremost thing we should see what is the range of the measurement and what is the range of the output, expected range of the output. Suppose pressure transducer, pressure transducer output is, range of the output is let us say 2 to 3 bar or 200 to 300 kilo Pascal and we are applying a transducer of 0 to 25 bar in a range of 0 to 25 bar or 0 to 20 bar because these type of transducers in a range of 0 to 25 or 0 to 20 bar are very easily, I mean they are in abundance in the market. So, <coughs> they are easily available. So, but if you put 0 to 20 to 2 to 3 bar or 1 bar pressure, uh, uh, it may incur many errors. I mean it is not appropriate to go for such type of transducer. As I told you earlier, this for the scale range, for the entire scale range, your uh, reading should fall in the middle 60 percent, 20 percent this side and 20 percent on this side. You should avoid this. Sometimes it is unavoidable, but while choosing a trans transducer, we can always ensure that the expected output falls in this range, right? So <coughs> 0 to 5 bar will be okay for this. 0 to 5 bar will be okay for such type of measurement, not 0 to 20 or 0 to uh, 100 bar. Second thing is the commercially available transducers or pressure gauges, they give gauge pressure. Gauge pressure is above the atmospheric pressure which is above the atmospheric. So one should not forget, one should not <coughs> forget to add atmospheric pressure in the pressure indicated by the pressure gauge or transducer. Absolute pressure transducers are also available. So when, when, when going for the selection of the transducer, we should ensure or when we are applying uh, using the transducer for pressure measurement, we should ensure whether it is a absolute pressure type of transducer or pressure gauge type of transducer or, or the gauge pressure type of transducer and range is also important. Now the first thing, <coughs> second thing is the transducer should have high impedance, input impedance, loading effect. Loading effect as I stated earlier, it is <coughs> some energy is used, part of the input energy is used for actuation of the uh, transducer and this part of energy is results in the loading effect. For example, we are using potentiometer for the displacement, there is a potentiometer and there is a uh, attachment to the potentiometer and there is a stylus and we are using this potentiometer for displacement measure, uh, measurement. So, due to inertia of this indicator, I mean where the, is, uh, this stylus is attached, the actual displacement will be less than the uh, real, I mean uh, the, 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 the displacement we get out of this device will be a little less than the displacement we should have got without, because this is an obstruction in the displacement and due to inertia uh, effect of this, the displace, actual displacement will be less than the ideal displacement. So the loading effect should be avoided, same is the case in the thermocouples, in the process of uh, temperature measurements or thermometer, energy is drawn from the measurement, right. So that also uh, causes a load, loading error. And a transducer should have very good resolution, I mean measuring device should have very good resolution throughout the entire range of measurement. So that is another selection criteria <coughs> and the system should be highly sensitive to the desired input. It should not be sensitive or it should, it should be insensitive to the any interfering and the modifying input and the system should, should be very highly sensitive to the desired input that is a, a, a selection criteria for the transducer and it should be preferably very small, but small is easy to manipulate. Size of the uh, transducer has to be small, as small as possible. 
it should be able to work in the hostile environment, maybe in the oxidizing environment or the corrosive environment, especially in the corrosive environment, because in those places, or especially in the, near the sea coast, the environment is very corrosive. So uh, the transducer should be able to perform in that environment. <coughs> it should be able to witness pressure, shock, and vibration extra. So these, the pressure, shock, and vibration should not act as a interfering input to the transducer, right? A high degree of uh, accuracy, high degree of repeat, it is always desired that the, the measurement of the transducer ha have to be high, it should have high degree of accuracy, uh, high degree of repeatability, it should be error free. <coughs> and the most important thing is every transducer, especially electrical transducer should have some overload protection. In mechanical transducers we can design, we can take some factor of safety. But in electrical transducers, right, so they should have some overload protection so the transducer is not damaged if there is a random input of or a pulse, there is a pulse in the transducer, so it should not get damaged. So this is the selection, this is about the selection of transducers. Now type of, this is important, type of transducers. So type of transducers means what is the basic principle of measurement basic principle of measurement means uh, I, when i write you will uh, uh, understand that first is resistance type of transducers second is inductive transducers inducted type or inductive third is capacitance first of all we'll discuss all these three right and if you look at the governing equation and all it is, I mean not very high physics or mathematics is involved. For example, resistance transducer. Now resistance of any wire, resistance of any wire, R is specific resistance, specific resistance, length of the wire, cross section area of the wire, right. If I change, because specific resistance of a wire is constant. But if I change length of the wire or cross section area of the wire, the resistance will change, right. And for example, I change cross section area of the wire. A wire, electrical wire is put under tension, a force is applied on electrical wire. When the wire is put under tension, its length will increase right, because it is a metallic wire, the length will increase and at the same time its cross section area will reduce and this will alter the resistance of the wire. For different type of loading, we can have different type of resistance of wire, right. And then we can have force is a function of resistance of wire, Right. Now the issue is how to measure the resistance of wire. Okay, resistance of wire has changed. Now we have to measure the resistance of wire as well. So normally it, it is made a, a, an arm of a wheat stone bridge. If you remember a wheat stone bridge R1, R2, R3, R4, then this is R1, R2, R3 and R4 and it is balanced if it is a balanced wheat stone bridge, uh, galvanometer is here. So R1 by R2 is equal to R3 by R4. So balancing is done and when the wheat stone and R1, R2, R3 and R4. So just R3 and R4 ratio is known to us. Just by manipulating the R2 and when, when we manipulate R2 and we see there is no deflection here right, then we get the value of, obviously we will get the value of R1. So weed stone bridge is used, a weed stone bridge is used for finding out the value of R1 or the change in R1, in fact the value of R1. Once we find the change in the R1, delta R, this is change in R1. Once we know the change in resistance, we can always find the force because this relationship is already with us. So we can find the force applied on the uh, wire, right. <coughs> Another second way of doing it is 
uh, change in the resistance by temperature. One way, well, this is the one way of changing the resistance. Another way is change in the resistance by temperature. And this change in resistance also can be done by another way, like as in the case of potentiometer. In potentiometer, we do not put wire under tension. In potentiometer, there is a particular length of the wire. There is a particular length of the wire, right? And this is uh, plus and this is minus. So, this and L by sorry V by E by X is the potential gradient E by L is the potential gradient. If you are taking only this is L, if you are taking output only X from X length of the wire, the potential is going to be E by L multiplied by X. So, now this potential can be related with the movement of this indicator or yawk on the wire itself. How much part of the wire is active? Okay, that will decide the displacement in the wire. In, in, in the in, in displacement of this is related with the output of the potentiometer. So that is another way by varying the resistance. So one way of varying resistance is just to simply stretch the wire, as in the case of strain gauges. In the strain gauges strain is developed in the wire and the strain is measured. Now, here in this case, this is the case of potentiometer, how the displacement is measured with the help of a potentiometer. Another case is change in the resistance with temperature. R is equal to R O 1 plus alpha delta T. Now, this uh, principle is used for change in the resistance is used for um, uh, temperature measurement, right. So, in this case, <laughs> alpha for, for every uh, uh, wire or metal is known, for every metal is known. Once we have the value of delta T, we can measure the, the change in the resistance, right. And this change in the resistance or we just we measure the change in the resistance, this change in resistance will reflect change in the temperature. All these devices we will be discussing in details when I will particularly discuss about the temperature and pressure. At that time I will discuss uh, in details all these issues will be discussed, right. So, the resistance, the, the, the best part of the resistance transducer is that it is inexpensive. If you go for inductive type or capacitance type of transducer, they are comparatively they are uh, more expensive and these transducers are, resistive transducers are simple to operate. The operation is not, is not very typical <coughs> and for large amplitude, I mean if you are using potentiometer, you can measure the depth displacement of the order of 1 meter. But if you take inductive transducer like LVDT, for, for a displacement measurement of 1 meter, the size will be very huge and it will be difficult to manage linearity shall, there are many issues, linearity will not be maintained. But for resistive transducers, right, so large amplitude of the input can be measured with these transducers. Electrical efficiency is high for these transducers, but the problem with this is, for example, in the case of potentiometer a considerable force is required to move the slide, right, and that causes the loading effect. Second thing is we are using a metal and properties of metal are with us for the pure metal, metal which is 100 percent. So, for example, copper, we are using copper wire. So, we have the properties of copper when the copper is 100 percent pure. But normally we do not get copper and we get 99.9 percent or 99.5 percent copper, right. And still some contamination may be there, that is one thing. Second thing, we are using a wire for some for, for resistance measurement. Cross section area may not remain constant, there are some fabrication limitations. Cross section area may not remain constant. When the slide is moving over the wire, 
veering of wire may take place, the cross section area may reduce, there may be cut on the wires some places, the connectivity is there, but some cuts are there. That will also alter the output from the system. So, so these are certain drawbacks, but they are cheap, but on the one side they are cheap, on the other side there are certain limitations also for uh, resistive type of transducers. We will take one by one uh, uh, resistive tra transducer, for example, resistance, resistance strain gauge. Resistance strain gauge. The principle of working of strain gauge is when the strain is developed, resistances change, right? <laughs> and these strain gauge are either are used for measuring the pressure, for torque measurement also they are used because if you are putting a strain gauge here, it is a thin foil. So when the torque takes place, the, the strain gauge will be strained and then you can measure the change in resistance and, uh, and the torque applied on the shaft. With theta of the shaft, you can measure and subsequently torque can be uh, uh, measured. Displacement also can be measured with the help of uh, resistance type of strain gauges. Resistance thermometers are there as I explained. I mean with the temperature, the resistance of the uh, uh, wire will change, right? Or so resistance of the substance will change, right? And this will also cause resistance. <laughs> this is how we can measure the change in temperature. We can relate change in resistance with the change in temperature. So, they are known as resistance thermometer. Resistance hygrometer are also there. Hygrometer is used for moisture content. So, if there is a moisture content in the, in the there is a porous uh, uh, resistor. So, porous resistor when the high humidity air comes into the porous resistors, it alters the resistance of the porous resistor. So, this is how the, the, uh, the, the humidity can be or uh, moisture content can be checked, moisture content and any, any mixture can be checked uh, with the help of resistance hygrometer. There is hot wire meter, uh, hot wire anemeter is also there to find the velocity and the, and the, and the, and the principle is when a hot wire, wire, when the air is blown, higher the velocity of air more the heat is carried away by the air, right? And if I want to maintain constant temperature on this surface, more energy has to be pumped into the wire. So, this energy can be related with the velocity or we are giving constant energy to the wire, then fall in temperature of wire that can be related with the velocity. So, this is also one of the application of uh, uh, resistance transducer. Photoconductive cells are there. They are cells when the uh, when the uh, uh, light flux falls on the cell, their resistance changes. So this change in resistance with the light flux can further be related, and we can get we can find the corresponding light intensity which is falling on the sensor. So, that is another application, thermistor is there, it is a semiconductor thermistor and it is a, it has negative temperature coefficient. Uh, it means when we increase the temperature, the resistance of the thermistor reduces. Thermistor is also used as a control device in many of the electrical applications and the relationship between temperature and the resistance is not linear. But it does not mean they are very accurate. Any measuring instrument which does not have I mean linear relationship, linearity is required, but input output relationship if it is not linear, it does not mean that it is poor in accuracy. The instrument can be non-linear at the same time, it can be very highly accurate. And nowadays ICs are available, now the circuits are available where non-linear relationship can easily convert, can be easily converted into the linear relationship. So thermistor, they are, it has very non-linear input output relationship but it, it is very good for uh, temperature measurement. Potentiometer type of systems I have already you explained to you when there is a slide which slides moves on the on a wire and, 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 and more is the movement towards the earth, more higher is the output from the potentiometer, right. So there are certain devices which are used for, which use the principle of 
change in resistance with the input signal. Now, after this, there is a principle of inductance, inductive transducers, where the principle of inductance is used, right. <coughs> These transducers, either they operate on mutual inductance or self-inductance, right. And when there is a change in the flux, so necessarily they have to operate on AC, they, they do not have to operate on DC. So, when there is a change in flux, EMF is generated, right. They work on this principle, self-inductance means there is, a, uh, there is a change in the flux in the primary coil, in EMF will be generated, mutual inductance is if two coils are placed nearer to each other, change in the flux in this coil will cause induction EMF in this coil, <coughs> right. And these uh, transducers, they operate in a, in, in a limited range, not like resistance transducer, they, they can operate in a higher range. So, if you compare with them, they operate in a, in a limited range. And uh, <laughs> LVDT, LVDT is one of the uh, uh, very popular uh, transducer for displacement measurement. We will be discussing in details in, in the subsequent lectures about uh, LVDT. And these transducers, because they are working on uh, uh, induction, principles of electrical induction, they have to be properly shielded, especially at the point of application if there is a lot of change in the flux at the point of application, proper shielding of the transducer is required. Otherwise, the, uh, the, uh, the transducer will be responsive to the spurious input and that will uh, cause, ultimately cause error in the uh, measurement. And third thing is, <coughs> Core is iron core is used normally in inductive transducers. I will explain in LVDT, LVDT also. Iron core is used. Iron core works as a uh, as a protection for flux. When the flux enters the iron core, it is it is to a greater extent protected by the external influences. So iron core is normally used in in many of the inductive type of uh, transducers. Now, there are differential transformers also which are used in, because principle of transformer is also used in, 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 in inductive uh, transducers and uh, <coughs> differential uh, transfer, transformer type of system is also where there is a one primary and two secondary. This is used in uh, LVDTs. There are certain ED current because ED current also in, are induced. So, ED current uh, type of uh, gauges are also used for, uh, for the measurement. So, they also uh, use the principle of uh, inductance. Now, the third one is capacitance type of uh, transducers, capacitance. Now, if two, there are two plates, uh, if they are charge plus and minus, is a normal, very simple arrangement of capacitance and it, if, if it is not filled, it is that air also, right. <laughs> then capacitance is epsilon naught uh, A by T is the distance between the plates, right. And <coughs> if we change the value of D, either we change the value of D, right, the C will change and then when we measure the C, we can correlate or always correlate with C with the change in the distance with the plates. If we change the area, that is also possible, suppose there are two disc, they are not complete disc, they are, they are partially cut. So, when we rotate one disc over the other, then overlapping will change, that will also change the C or we 
and insert some let us say iron core or some material dielectric material. So, dielectric strength will also change right that will also change this is the basic uh, I mean this is the physics behind this uh, measurement by capacitance uh, transducer. So, it works upon so it depends the out the, the, the capacitance depends upon the plate area the distance between plate and dielectric strength of the material between these two plates and this C is again when we are able to measure C we can connect these this change in C with certain physical phenomena right and <laughs> but issue here is because capacitance is always in microfarads or picofarads so output signal is weak in in case of capacitance or its, it's range is very small a few farads change will take place for a substantial input so that has to be amplified so that is one of the uh, uh, basic requirement in, in, in a capacitance transducers that output signal of the transducer has to be amplified because for a substantial change in input there is only small change in the output and so <laughs> magnification in is is a very important part in this type of transducers right and rest of the things suppose you connect a stylus of an output displacement to this plate then the, this plate will move relative to this plate then definitely C will change or force or pressure is exerted on this plate that the plate will come into this direction in that case also the C will change. So, I mean there are many ways we can use this property of or this phenomena of capacitance for the purpose of measurement. So, we can have so we can have variable capacitance pressure gauges capacitor microphones are also there. I mean on microphone also I mean there is a, a pneumatic pressure or I mean the sound waves they also cause pressure on, on, on this on one plate and the, when the plate moves with the, with the sound waves and C will also change according to the sound, sound waves. So, we can have capacitor microphone also dielectric gauge magnetic gauge. So, these type of gauges are, are having the working principle of a capacitive transducer. Now, a very interesting type of trans so we have already covered resistance, induct principle of resistance and change in resistance, change in inductance and change in capacitance. Now, in addition to this, there are transducers which are known as piezoelectric transducers. Now, piezoelectric phenomena, <coughs> first of all, there are certain benefits of piezoelectric transducers. They are easy to fabricate, fabrication is easy, frequency response is well very good for piezoelectric transducers where there is a frequency input for highly accurate transducers these piezoelectric crystals are used even they are used for the pressure measurement. Pressure me measurement normally in pressure transducers either strain gauges are used for uh, pressure measurement or these piezoelectric crystals are used. Now, the property of piezoelectricity is if there is a piezoelectric crystal, if you apply force or the pressure or, the, or you compress the or try to compress the crystal, EMF will be generated and this EMF is proportional to the applied force. Response of piezoelectric crystal is very good, I mean it is in, in some milliseconds. So, that is why for frequency input, for frequency input they are the best primary sensing element in fact, they are very good primary sensing element. Their linearity is very good, the piezoelectric crystals they have very good linearity, there is no maintenance, cost is very low. So, there are many points which are in favor of piezoelectric transducers, but piezoelectric sensors are costlier. If you compare with the cost of the strain gauge type of sensors, piezoelectric type of sensors are quite costly, costlier if you compare the cost. The piezoelectric material fall, it falls in three groups. So, these three groups are <laughs> natural, the piezoelectric material which, which is found in natural nature. So, natural white quartz, it is 
And another material is Rochel salt, that is also natural uh, piezoelectric material. Turmalin, that is also a natural piezo piezoelectric material. And some are synthetic. Uh, synthetic uh, piezoelectric crystal. So, synthetic piezoelectric crystal is first of all is ADP, ammonia dihydride phosphate ADP. It is a synthetic uh, piezoelectric crystal, lithium sulphate and, and there are many. I am just giving one <coughs> uh, some, some, some example. <laughs> polymer films, certain polymer films also uh, work as a piezoelectric uh, transducer polymer films. They also work as a, they also have property of uh, piezo uh, electricity. <coughs> but the natural quartz is most stable. This natural quartz, quartz is most stable and it is also grown artificially and is preferred since it is pure, pure than naturally occurred ones. So, <coughs> Natural quartz natural quartz <laughs> is uh, most stable type of uh, piezoelectric transducers. So, they have certain relative merits and demerits that we will discuss when we will discuss in details about the piezoelectric transducers. Uh, Certain transducers work on the Hall effect. Now, Hall effect is, for example, there is a conductor, there is a conductor, right. Suppose this is a conductor, right. Vertically, if I am, if magnetic field is applied, across these two edges EMF will be generated. I am repeating, suppose current is going in this direction, magnetic field is vertical, there is a vertical magnetic field or downwards vertical field, EMF will be generated between these two faces depending upon the direction of magnetic field and direction of current flow, right. And this effect is also used in number of uh, measuring devices. There are certain biosensors also. So, biosensor, they are biological uh, substances which are sensitive to, to certain type of input. So, in, 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 in subsequent lectures, I will cover the biosensors also because nowadays there is a lot of stress on biosensors, right. So, this is all for today. Thank you very much.